Right, so what we're gonna do from this point on is we're actually gonna use this setup in order to be able to use Material UI. So the first thing we'll do is we'll work on the header component. So back in the documentation, if you go to component demos app bar, you can see that we have several demo app bars over here. So the one that I'm actually gonna be using is this one. And if you click on the source icon over there, you're gonna be able to see the actual source of this component. Now, the component structure itself is using the app bar wrapper, and it's also using the toolbar. And then under that, you basically include all of your content. So they have the icon button, you also have the typography over here, the title, and they have a login button as well. So we're gonna be using a similar setup. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy over that markup back to header.js. So we're not gonna have any div over here. Instead, we're gonna have an app bar. And of course, in this case, we need to import the app bar. So this is where Material UI actually comes in. Now, the way you would do this, as you can see in the docs, is one thing you could do is you could import them separately. So let's begin with the app bar component. So we're gonna import app bar from Material UI slash app bar. The slash app bar is actually important in this case. So we're looking for the app bar component of Material UI, but there's also an alternative way to import elements, as I'm gonna show you in a few seconds. But for now, let's also import the toolbar from Material UI, uh, UI slash toolbar, I believe. Let's save that. And in this scenario, I'm just gonna kill all of the inner stuff for now. This is what it's gonna look like. And like I said, there's also an alternative to this approach. So whenever you import multiple elements from Material UI, as you can see over here, they have the app bar, toolbar, as well as the typography element that's gonna be used for text. The one thing you can do is instead of using default imports from different sections or segments of that library for different uh, UI elements, you could also import them using the named import. So in this case, I'm just gonna import the app bar as well as the toolbar using the named import, but in this case, I'm just gonna import them directly from Material UI. And in this case, we can kill the second line and save it, and it's gonna give us the same output. Now, of course, it's not enough. We also wanna be able to use a typography element. Now, an important note needs to be said about the text elements over here in this library. So the way we work with text in Material UI is that we actually depend on several different font sizes. So of course, you have access to CSS, and in fact, what the library does is it actually uses CSS and JS approach instead of something like less or SAS as you might be familiar with but uh, in other frameworks like Bootstrap or Bulma or anything like that. Instead of actually relying on anything of that sort, what the library does is it uses the internal JSS or CSS and JavaScript approach. Now, of course, you are able to manipulate font sizes yourself, but there's already a built-in uh, default styles or sizes that you can use. So for instance, they have different sizes for titles or display. There's one for headline, there's one for title, and then there's a bunch of other ones for the normal text, let's say the body text of your, in your application. And as you can see here, the element, there's only one component or UI element that we would use for text, and it's called typography. The way you manipulate the size of typography is by the variant property on that um, on that component. And this is, as you can imagine, this is just a normal component because the Material UI library itself uses React under the hood. So all of the different components that you see over here, so the app bar, the toolbar, those are just normal React components. It's just that they're styled and they already have built-in behavior that's um, concealed behind the scenes in the library itself when we import it, okay? So like I said, we're gonna be using the typography element. So let me just copy one back in here and just paste it in there. And we're just gonna say exercise database. Now, of course, as you might expect, we need to import the typography element. Now, as you can see, this is pretty big, so we can use something different. So let's use, let's say headline for now, instead of display for, let's use a headline. A different variant is gonna give you a different text size as well, okay? And I'm gonna remove the gutter bottom as well. So this is gonna center it a little bit. And the one thing we'll do is we'll also have the color property and I'm gonna set it to inherit. Now, when it comes to different properties, as you can see here, we changed the color to white. So it inherited the color. 
from the root um, or the parent component. Whenever you're not sure about the different properties that the API exposes, make sure to go back to the documentation, click on Component API, and look for the specific element that you have in mind. So in this case, I'm looking for typography. It's going to be somewhere at the bottom. And as you can see here on the typography page, we have a list of different properties that we can use. So for instance, we've already used the variant property, as you saw. And that's the property over here that allows us to manipulate the size of the typography element. And we've got different options, as you can see. We've got displays from one to four. We've got titles, subheadings, body, button, and a few other ones. And besides that, of course, as you might expect, there's classes property. So you could pass different classes to your typography element. There is the component, allows you to manipulate the component, the underlying component. Uh, paragraph, no wrap, there's a bunch of other ones, but the one I'm interested in actually for now is the color property. So we use the inherit value for that color property. And as you might expect, it's uh, not, it doesn't require any brain science. It just uses, it just allows you to set the color of the text for that typography element. And I think this is good for now. We're gonna save that for the header. And in the footer element, back in here so what i'm going to do next is let's close off all of the other tabs and for the footer what i'd like to use is actually tabs so let me go back to the documentation and let me click on tabs so when it comes to tabs actually the one that i'd like to use is this one so we're going to be able to use these different tabs we're probably going to have more than three but these ones are actually going to be useful because they're going to allow us to switch between different views and it's going to make sense eventually once we dive into the exercises, so the actual meat of the application. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just copy over that markup. And I'm going to replace everything that we have in the footer with that markup. And of course, we need to import all the different elements. So let's import paper. Let's import tabs from material UI. Okay. And when it comes to tabs, like individual tabs, we actually have to use a bit of a different import because we need to import them from material UI slash tabs because this is a subcomponent for those tabs. In fact, you could check based on the import statement over here. So that's what I'm basically doing. I'm importing the tab, but the tabs can be part of the same import, the name import from material UI. Now I'm going to remove the class name for now. I'm also going to remove the value and the on change for now. So we're gonna save that. And this is what it looks like. Now actually for the value, the value needs to be an index. So with anything from zero up to the number of elements that you have minus one. So in this case we have three, so I could use either zero, one, or two. And if you refresh the page, like I said, in some cases you actually need to do that. It's kind of painful, but if you refresh the page, you can see that the first item is being underlined, as you might expect. Now, if you change it to, let's say, one, the second one is going to be underlined, and of course, two, that's going to affect the last one. I'm going to set it to zero for now. And this is basically it. Now, back in exercises uh, index.js file, this is basically the file that's going to house all of the business logic for the application. What I'm going to do for now is we're actually going to reach out to the grid component. So, if you go to layout grids, Let's expand the example over here and let's see how this allows us to use the grid component in Material UI. So what I'm looking for is actually being able to split the screen into two separate elements. And actually back in footer, just a simple side note, so we use the tabs element of course, but I wrapped it into the paper element. The paper element is sort of like a panel that looks like a paper, it does have the box shadow as you can see. And I'm actually going to use that element for the two um, panes, like the left pane and the right pane that we're going to put in the middle instead of the exercise, hello from exercises um, h1 tag or whatever we have. So back in the docs here, like I said, what we're actually looking for is being able to split the display into two sides, two elements, two columns, as you might call them if you used something like bootstrap. So for now, I'm just going to have the grid element and let's also import that grid from material UI okay from material UI okay now the grid itself cannot be used like that so it either has to be a container that's going to be the container element or it could also be an item okay which means that it's basically a child element so let's say this is going to be the left pane and let's also have the right pane over there 
Okay, uh, let's save that. And the reason that you actually don't see them taking a full width, so like taking 50% each, is because we did not specify the size of those elements. So when it comes to material UI, there's actually five built-in breakpoints. If you go back to layout basics, you can see that they have the extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large elements over here. And those obviously correspond to different sizes or breakpoints based on the device width. Okay. So back in the grid, the one thing we can do is we can simply set the size. So I'm going to set it to small. Okay. Set it to small for both of the items. And as you can see here, they're going to take 50% of the width because they're basically going to be adjusted automatically. The, the other thing you could do is if you look at the documentation, you could actually set it manually. So you could set the size on the container. For instance, let's set it to small 12. And as you probably guessed, the framework or the library itself uses a 12 column layout, similar to Bootstrap or Bulma, or just about any other library that uses grid setup. And by the way, it's also using the Flexbox model. But back in our application here, the other thing we would do is, of course, you could set the other one to, for instance, six, okay? And the second one, of course, you would also set it to six. But as you can see here, that's actually not necessary. If I switch back and um, undo all those steps and save the file, as you can see, we're gonna get the exact same output. The cool thing about the automatic um, sizing is that we can actually add more elements and the display is going to be adjusted automatically so that you don't actually have to set these sizes manually okay now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to have a paper element over here okay let's close it off let's also import paper from the framework okay let's um have the same thing at the bottom on the left what i'm just going to do is i'm going to say left pane and on the right that's going to be the same thing Except uh, right pane. Okay. And once we save that, this is what it looks like. The other thing I'll do is let's also add styles over here. So, nothing fancy really. I'm just going to have an object with a property called paper. And this one's going to hold some CSS styling that I'd like to add. Very primitive for now. And as you're going to see, there's multiple ways to go about styling. So, as I mentioned multiple times, um, the library uses GSS. So, it's a an interesting solution to CSS or some styling in your React projects in general. But for now, I'm just going to use inline styling and I'd just like to set padding to 20. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get that and I'm just going to set it directly on the paper element itself. So I'm going to set style to that object. Let's set padding to 20. Okay, for both of them actually. And I'm just going to use inline styling for now because we don't actually have that many styles. I think that's fine for now. Um, let's also add margin top. I'm going to set it to 10 pixels. Margin bottom to 10 maybe. And let's do the same thing for the second one as well. I'm going to copy them and paste. In fact, at this point, because this is duplicated, I'm actually going to create a separate variable. So this is very flexible. Make sure to, um, to do this based on your needs as you as you are progressing, as you're building out your app. If it's getting uh, ugly, if it's getting duplicated, make sure to use variables, use whatever you can. There's also other approaches, like I mentioned, and we're going to explore them as we go along, but inline styling for now is exactly what we need. So this is the basic skeleton, as you can see. We've got two panes. In fact, the very last thing I'll do is I'm actually gonna um, export them to separate files. So let's create left pane.js. Let's also create another file, right pane.js. So the idea is basically for now, the index.js, what it's actually going to be is a functional component that receives data from app.js file, okay? And the other panes are basically going to be separate elements that contain all of the logic necessary to be displayed. So I'm gonna move the left pane, as you might expect, to left pane itself. And this element, or this module, is going to import React from React, as always, and it's going to export defaults. 
a function that's going to receive props and it's just going to have a purple paper element inside of it and we're going to need that paper element import in the file as well let's get rid of the grid we're not using that now for the styling it gets a little bit trickier i think what we're going to do is we're actually going to pass in the styles as the property so let's have the left pane and the styles are going to be the property is just going to refer to that object and the content that we created and we're going to have a similar concept for the right pane but of course it's going to have different uh, contents so let me just correct that by right, right pane okay and both need to be imported obviously we still need the grid but we no longer need the paper for now at least so I'm going to remove that let's import left pane from left pane okay and let's also import right pane from right pane and here this style is not defined let's actually destructure it so I'm gonna take it from the styles property pass down and we're gonna get the paper elements okay this is already good so let's save that let's go back to right pane and in here I'm just gonna say right pane everything else stays the same okay All right so having this skeleton we can actually move on to implementing the logic of the application I'm gonna stop here for now this is gonna be a multi-part series and we're going to continue next week and we're actually going to build out the application. We're going to have a list of exercises on the, on the left. So it's basically going to be exercises um, organized by category. And on the right, we're actually going to have a simple view that allows us to see the title, the description, and maybe some of the other details pertaining to that specific exercise. So you'll be able to select the exercise on the left from the list. And when it comes to the bottoms, uh, when it comes to the buttons at the bottom, you're actually going to be able to switch to different views in the application. And maybe we're going to basically, um, when you click on different um, different categories, these are going to be like different categories of the uh, exercises. Once you click on them, you're going to be able to uh, switch between the views and sort the list of exercises based on the selected category. And besides that, of course, we're going to add the functionality to add different exercises, edit them, delete and probably some of the other functionality as well. But for now, we're gonna stop at this point. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial and I'm gonna see you next week. Bye-bye.